Guys, it's Red Hot and Ready, and today we're taking a trip to the Orient, the Far East. That's right, the land of mystical, magical treasures. Okay, we're hopping on the Orient Express. We're heading down the track. We're stopping at Satayville. We're on to Black Bean Boulevard. Then we're moving straight on down to Lemongrass Alley. That's right, that's where they play ping pong. We're doing karate chops today in the backyard. That's right, we're learning the art of martial arts. Hey <laughs> So that's it. We're going downtown. We're going to kickbox our way to some fantastic Asian street food. Catch you there. Ooh. That stung like a... Okay, here's the skinny guys. We're in the middle of Asia, what are we gonna eat? You know, no sense climbing a tree. There's plenty of people up there already living in the tree houses, okay? No. There's competition for food in the trees. Mm -hmm. There's competition for food on the ground. Mm -hmm. But the best place to find it is in the market. The street food of Asia is a force to be reckoned with, okay? Actually, the day later, you're a force to be reckoned with, but that doesn't matter, because it's all good. It tastes great. One of the biggest problems over there with the food is the water, right? Oh, that's nice. So this is for Round-eyed, hairy, monkey, westerner guys to be drinking this kind of stuff, okay? Okay. How to break into one of these things is the easiest thing in the world, okay? Moving right along. See, you got these holes on the end here. These have already been sort of plugged up with something. I don't know what they're plugging it up. You never know, those crazy Asians, there could even be a cell phone inside of here, you know? They're probably, they're probably growing cell phones inside of coconuts up top 60-foot trees. That's not true! There we are, shaking that out putting it into a bowl with cheesecloth, okay? Because the end result of this is that we don't want any of these crazy little Asian bits of wood floating around in our food. Watch out, boys. How do we get into this? The Chinese would probably use a cleaver, okay? Tim, what's his name? Who's that guy? That, that doesn't matter. He'd probably use that. As soon as you don't know Tim, and I don't know his last name, let's not talk about him. Let's just get Mr. Machete out, okay? And I find the easiest way to go with this sort of process is you carefully line it up. You go one, two, three. You close your eyes and go, there we are. Ask me why I closed my eyes. John, why did you close your eyes? Because I felt like it, okay? Quit asking stupid questions. Oh, that's nice. When peeling back the coconut from the shell, it's best to use an Eastern Canada oyster knife, because that's what they use over there. Ah. It's a bit of a labor-intensive job, but, you know, the fruits of your labor will be apparent once you've uh, completed this. There we are. God, this is tighter than a nun's budget. Wow. I'm so sorry. Now we're gonna grate this stuff up, okay? Very simple, grab a grater and then grate. You know how to do that, right? Just put your hands together and grate. Time traveling. <sighs> Done, okay. I'm gonna put all this stuff in here, okay? All of it, straight in. Wrap it in the cheesecloth. Let's roll this up a bit. I'm opening one side here, and I'm pouring a little bit of water in, just like that. Soak it up, and then we give this a really good squeeze. Soak it again. And then we give it a really good squeeze. This is gonna extract all the milk out of the pulp we've just made. This is how the Asians would do it. Look at that, see how cloudy that water is? Ah, that's the pure coconut flavor. Okay, the other option here is, of course, you can go out and buy yourself a can. It costs about $1.25 and it looks sort of very much very much alike, okay, so you be the judge. So come on back as the Orient Express cruises on down the track to culinary greatness. That's what Forget about action movies with guns and gangsters. Martial arts experts are the hottest new action heroes. Like superhuman beings, they exercise their minds and bodies in unison. Today we have Charles Carabin here to talk to us about Taekwondo. So stick around for the action. Yeah! Hey, 
Hey, okay, kids, we're back, and this is the marinating portion of our program. Oh, well, that's not what I do best. We're doing up a Asian-style coleslaw, okay? We got the purple cabbage, we got the carrots, which we're gonna dump in right now. But before we go any further, we gotta mix it up slightly and hit this with some salt, okay? The reason we're doing this is that we want to soften this up a bit. We want to extract some of the moisture out of it, which is why it's sitting in a colander like this. See? Put some salt on it, toss it around, throw a plate on top, a couple cans. The weight of this on top of the cabbage is going to extract the moisture. That's what we're trying to do. That's why we have the colander here. That's why the bowl is underneath. We're going to loosen the moisture, but it's going to soften up. It's going to be nicely seasoned. Let's get right on to our meat here. This is a piece of flank steak. Not a, very, uh, not a very tender cut of meat, but we're gonna cut it in small enough pieces and the lemony and limey marinade that we're putting it in, it's gonna tender it up in a nice way. Not to mention it's gonna give it that real Asian flavor. So we're gonna cut this into pieces approximately half an inch to an inch big. Cutting across the grain, right? Cutting with the grain will create sort of a stringy piece of beef and that's what we're looking for. A stringy beef, that's a whole different show. The muscle that it comes from is a very used muscle, just over top of the hip of the animal. That is disgusting. It gets worked a lot, so there's no, you know, there's not much fat on it, okay? I got it, I got it. Adding to this, we got ginger, fresh ground ginger. That's about a thumb sized piece, about the size of my thumb. We got two cloves of garlic going straight in, and we got the juice of three limes. Pour that straight in, and a little bit of sesame oil. This is the oil extracted from toasted sesame seeds. Really, really hyper important flavor in Asian cooking. Putting this over here, moving right along. We got our chicken. Chicken, well, over there, I'm not sure if it's actually chicken enough to use it. It looks sort of the same, tastes totally different. I'm not sure what they do with it. Maybe it's the water, maybe it's the fact that, you know, that it's been overworked. I'm not sure what the hell's going on. Maybe they're working in electronics plants. Judging by the way my Hyundai runs, you know, like. That's funny. And you're probably questioning yourself, you said, okay, this guy just chopped beef on this cutting board, and now I'm chopping, chopping the chicken on there. Is this gonna be a problem? No, it's not. Okay, what you don't wanna be doing is cutting your salad on this board after you've done your chicken and beef, right? You eat that down, you're gonna be having Montezuma's revenge for a week, man, that's no joke. Move this over, flip this, just to be safe in case something touches it. Look at that battle scarred board, wonder how that happened. Got a chicken cut up, we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of soya sauce to that. I can't believe we're putting soy sauce into an Asian marinade. What am I thinking? But it's more dramatic that way. Okay, we got some cinnamon. That's about a teaspoon and a half. Some red chili pepper. About a tablespoon of that. That's gonna add that nice sort of uh, Southwest Asia sort of feel. Got a little bit of curry powder. Got some lemon zest here. That's gonna add a really nice sort of citrusy thing because that's what it is, right? It's citrus. Okay, dumping in citrus juice. That's juice of a lemon. And we got something to augment that lemon flavor, right? This is lemongrass. I'm just gonna bust this up a bit, toss it in. The last thing we want to add to this is our coconut milk. That's the stuff that we did earlier, okay? Or not, okay? And we're gonna mix this up. And we wanna let each of these sit for at least two hours, man. Just get the flavor running right through it. We want it to be like an Asian surprise. It's gonna make you so horny. And last but not least, okay, we're gonna make a little bit of a vinaigrette for this Asian style coleslaw. What we're gonna do, let that stand for three hours, make the vinaigrette, let that stand, the flavor's gonna develop, it's gonna be all good, right? We got another thumb sized piece of ginger. We got a little bit of chili flakes. Use your discretion on that. If you like it hot, put a lot in. If you don't like it hot, well, put a lot in anyway, because I'm telling you so, right? Hot stuff. Mm, and this is, exactly, you gotta check sometimes. Sugar, salt look just the same. This is sugar, and that's what we want. I think I got a chili flake in there at the same time, man. Wow, why the hell are these guys such idiots? That's good. That was a tablespoon, and this is rice vinegar. Very, very, very mild form of vinegar. Beautiful flavor. Dump that straight in. Hit it with a little bit of salt now. Boom. Okay, guys, and when we come back, we're taking it all outside. We got our beef, we got our shrimp, we got our chicken, we got our coleslaw. We got another little Asian surprise for you. So cruise on down the tracks. We're taking the Orient Express to Asian street food. We're in the backyard with Master Carabin and his students from Carabin's Taekwondo Studio. Now, where does Taekwondo originate? 
Uh, taekwondo is a Korean style of martial art mm -hmm. and it originated in Korea many, many centuries back. And at that time, it was uh, developed from a, uh, basically foot movements uh -huh. into a, a self-defense method that would protect people from a highwayman and robbers. And <laughs> has developed to this day into one of the most spectacular martial arts and the most popular in the world. And how is Taekwondo different from other martial arts? Taekwondo uses a lot of spectacular high kicking techniques <laughs> and foot movements to get you in and out from an opponent very rapidly. Uh -huh. And uh, also it's known as the Korean art of self-defense and it's based on a defensive spirit. And we have constantly impressed upon the children and everything that that was exactly what we want them to do. Never use it except in self-defense. So it looks like there's a wide variety of ages interested in Taekwondo. We go from four years of age, uh -huh. and my oldest student right at this particular moment is 74 years of age, and uh -huh. he's a black belt. It's scary for everyone who's involved. So let's go through the belts. White belt first. Yes, and then you go to yellow stripe, uh -huh. yellow belt. Uh -huh. Green stripe, green belt. We done? Blue stripe, blue belt. No, we're not done yet. Red stripe, red belt. Uh, I'm getting dizzy. Black stripe, and then black belt, and then your degrees of black belt. Now, what degree are you? I'm seventh degree. Okay, show us your belt here. It's taken me uh, 31 years to get to this. There are eight. Wow. And uh, <laughs> there are 10 degrees in all, but it takes 10 years between each of the, the high ranking degrees okay. now. So it'll be a few years again. <laughs> all right, I think we're ready for a demo. So she's using breathing mo methods, and that's proper uh, breath control as she's going through the different movements. She's doing lots of punches and blocks and kicks, and it's actually a fight against an imaginary opponent. Yeah! Also, we do uh, things that are known as board breaks, and the boards are, uh, are broken to design to show the power and the precision of the different technical movements. Okay. But also what we could do, uh, before we finish this segment, if you'd like, is I can have David show some of the kicking techniques. That would be great. One. Excellent job. Yeah! Stick with us, boys, because when we come back, we're going to learn the art of nunchucks. Yeah! We're back with Master Carabin and his students. And when you think of martial arts, nunchucks probably come to mind. So today, we've got a demonstration. Yeah, thanks. Actually, the nunchucks were originally a weapon, or not a weapon, but a tool that was used in the in the Orient for husking rice. Really? And then somebody <laughs> had the bright idea to attach a chain to it, and, and all of a sudden it became a self-defense weapon. Wow. So what he's doing is showing the different movements as he's doing self-defense, warding off attackers as they come. And the nunchucks are used yeah! in, in different type of, uh, of uh, competitions. It's a combined series of movements. David, can you help me here? And we'll show him how to do. Uh, all right. <laughs> but, uh, what's Don't that? Be scared. If somebody grabs you by the throat, uh -huh. say David is grabbing me, it's simple for you to take a step like this and then put your leg behind him, pulling up, okay? And they it'll drop their weight. So for you, if he grabs you by the throat, mm -hmm. step with your left leg past him. Now, you're going to push with your upper body uh -huh. using your body weight and pull with your with your right leg as you so put it So push back and pull up. Yeah, it's a push-pull principle. Okay. Try one. Okay. <laughs> Just for instance, if David was grabbing like this, right to the groin. Uh -huh. uh, if he grabs high around my arms like this, you just stretch and drop and you're instantly out of it and then you're going into the groin area again. Ouch. Okay, so is it easy for someone to get into Taekwondo? Absolutely. They don't have to. People are under the misconception that they have to be in good shape to start. Uh -huh. But you go in the beginner's courses and you start with a nice slow warm up and, and, and to make sure you don't pull any muscles. And then we progress and you get better, better condition and quite rapidly, by the way, also. So anybody can drop in, sign up, fill out a form, and away they start. Oh, that's great. There you go, guys. Get your beer drinking butt off the couch and exercise your mind and body in unison. What's the matter? Where you been? You wait. You're very late. This is wrong. OK, guys, this is lemongrass. We're out here at the grill, and we're about to skewer up our chicken, OK? You remember when we made our chicken marinade? We put this stuff in it. What I've done is I've cut this at an angle, peeled off a couple layers, and we're going to skewer our chicken right on this. Thread it straight down. Easy peasy. Look at that. Straight through. And while this cooks, the lemongrass flavor is going to permeate through the chicken, right? Okay, who gave me the fatty chicken, okay? I'm hard at work. I'm going to make a couple of these. What can I tell you about chicken? We want to cook it all the way through. You know, you don't want your raw chicken. As much as you like sushi, chicken is not the beast to be doing that with, okay? Let's take this straight over. 
onto the grill. Okay, don't worry about those flames, they'll die down in a second. We're gonna skewer up our citrus beef. Just putting this on bamboo skewers, you know? Time traveling. Okay, we got that happening. I'm gonna show you the cool trick I was telling you about. Bamboo, obviously, as tough as it is, it's still gonna burn. So I'm making up a little heat guard for the skewers. You fold this up, give it a bend at the end. Doesn't have to be pretty. This just protects the ends of our skewers from burning. So you slide it under there. And if you want, you can put one under the front as well. But I'm not gonna worry about it. You generally hold your skewer from the bottom anyway, okay? Moving straight ahead, we're gonna make peanut sauce, okay? This is so easy, man. Your grandmother could do this. I know she's dead, but she could still do it. That's how simple this is. You got a cup of peanut butter. Toss it in. This is also known that this sauce goes under a number of names. It's peanut sauce, noctampleur. That's in a certain region of uh, Singapore. It's also called dak baby chatten sauce, okay? Which I'm not sure why they call it that, but it's, uh, once you smell it, it'll make sense, okay? We got a couple of tablespoons of fish sauce there, which is actually the brine that, that's rinsed off of sun-dried rotting fish carcasses. No joke, that's where it comes from. I gotta get my hands on some of those. Two tablespoons of uh, soy sauce. Got two chopped shallots. We got some lime zest, that's a zest from one lime. We got the juice from one lime going straight in there. We got one cup of that coconut milk that we made earlier. Look at that. We got some curry paste, red Thai curry paste, to be specific, that's going in. We got cilantro, okay, speeding it up here. And that's about it, okay? Toss this sucker on here. Look at that. God bless America, home of the guys. The guys that dam up water stuff and make the other guys die, but they make good money. Oh, they make good, okay, I think we're ready here, okay. Thank you very much. The next show will be at 11 o'clock in the Landmark Lounge. Give that a taste, man. Stick your finger in there. That's some rockin' sauce, okay? Our beef's coming along pretty good here. You notice that the skewers at this end are getting brown. Skewers at this end are perfectly pale. There we are. Give them a little turn. Our chicken needs another turn here. And now it's gonna be no more than another three, four minutes. Okay, guys, what kind of dip are we making? We're making a black bean dip. This kind of dip is basically comes from a Chinese background, but it's also used in Vietnam, Malaysia, Thailand, okay? How do we make this? Very simple. Well, first you can go to the store, you can just buy a bottle of it, okay, that's easy. But, you know, the real way to get down with this is make your own. We got some shallots, a couple chopped up shallots. Those are those nice sweet red onions, the small ones, right? We got some garlic, plenty of that. Two cloves chopped up. And this is our black bean paste. Check that out, Robert. This is just black beans, Chinese black beans that have been sort of fermented a bit and stewed down. And that's going in here. It's almost like a tomato paste or something, right? So I'm just gonna saute this up for a bit. Okay, that's gonna take a few minutes there. While we're doing that, I'm just gonna add in some soya sauce, some sesame oil. Amazing smell on that. And we got a little bit of sherry, okay? Crank our temperature down here to low now. Okay, when we come back, we're throwing it all together. But in the meantime, I'm off to look into some mail order brides. You know what I'm saying? We're going straight to hell for this one. It's all about the meat. Okay, guys, we are cooking up our shrimp, okay? These are Chinese style. They've been sitting in a little bit of Chinese stuff, more specifically sesame oil. That's gonna keep them lubricated and off the grill. Add a little more salt to these babies. There we are. 
toss them on the grill. These things do not take long to cook, okay? So uh, get your ass off the... Something smells kind of funky in there. Back off, the sour's mine. Ah, that's probably nothing. Okay, let's keep going. Get these onto the grill. They're not gonna take long to cook, as I was saying. I'm gonna take them off, and I'm gonna show you a very cool street food technique of eating these. Let those rock and roll for a few minutes under cover of darkness. What do we got here? Okay, we got some romaine lettuce, we got some bean sprouts, and some shredded Asian dildo. You I knew it looked familiar. You know what I'm talking about. We talked about this earlier, right? Okay, we got some cabbage salad here with a beautiful rice vinegar vinaigrette. We're gonna throw all this crazy stuff together. We're getting it kind of kooky, got kind of upside down Asian. Toss these things over and make spring rolls out of all this stuff. It's gonna make you so horny. No, I'm not. That's Linda. Ha ha. Hey, Cracker, what time is it? Time travel. Look at this. Got a little bit of this. A little bean sprout. A little daikon. I'm gonna throw a little bit of this salad in here, too, because I'm a crazy madcap kind of Asian loving guy. A couple shrimp. We are. Put some black bean sauce. We fold this baby over. And there we are. We got an Asian spring roll sandwich wrapped in a lettuce leaf, okay? So stand by. What took you so long? Ooh. Mm, that's good. That's very good. <laughs> you know what my favorite thing is, though? Peanut butter sauce. What do I have that with? You can dab your chicken in it. And what is this on? That's on, that's on crazy, uh, crazy lemongrass. Crazy lemongrass. That's right. It's crazy. Check that out. Give it a stir, plop it on, shove it in your gob. Tell me if this ain't the sexiest thing that you've ever had in your mouth. Oh my god. Mmm. Mmm. Now that is good. It's spicy, isn't it? Mm, it's smooth, creamy, spicy, and hot. That's right, it's red hot. Red hot and ready. The home of smoky good eats. The home of smoky good eats.